Imagine being sent into a magical world full of mystical and wild creatures. And yes, I'm talking about Pokemon. And that is exactly where I will be spending my next 100 days. I have three goals to conquer this land. Train the best Pokemon team I can think of. Create my very own Poketown with its own battle arena. And defeat all 18 gyms. Yes, 18. Can I accomplish all of my goals as well as survive side by side with these mystical creatures? Guess you'll have to stay tuned to find out. So sit back, relax, grab an Oreo, and enjoy 100 days in Pixelmon. Ah, a fresh start on Pokisaga. You can play alongside me in the Dream Dimension with the IP play.pokisaga.org. I've also put a video down below in the description on how to download the Pixelmon Ultra Mod Pack. Now let's get into it. As all good stories start, I chose a companion for my adventure. Pokisaga has a ton of custom starters, but I went with an Eevee because I have so many options with her. From there, I was able to explore the hub and realize there was slash vote, so I did that real quick and got a bunch of keys. From these keys, I was given tools, money, tokens, Pokeball vouchers, you name it. I was even given two Omega Crate keys, which I got 2,000 tokens from and a Legendary Crate key. This guy I'll be saving because this is a random Legendary Pokemon and I'm gonna need him later, I'm sure. Then I randomly TP to start looking for a good place to settle down. First I went into a savanna and then realized this was definitely not the place for me. And then I ended up on an island with a sheep. I killed that sheep. Let's just say I'm really happy this Eevee is so much better than the Abra that I had last time I tried this. And after that, I just continued my search for a home. Along my search, I found some pretty cool things, including this mountain range and this really awesome monastery. I wanted to see if there's any loot inside, but unfortunately someone had gotten there first. Still, a really cool place if I wanted to settle down here. However, I have my own ideas for building. I settled my night at a Poke Center right next to a flower biome. From here, I should be able to make a really cool town or center for myself. Day 3 I tested my Pokemon out in a fight, or multiple fights until it died. Eevee's doing really well for herself and we're already at level 7. Not too bad for a Pokemon I just met, huh? After she died, I went ahead and healed her and then looked at some of the shops that the server offered. There's quite a bit here which means I'll have tons of building material to work with. And at the very end of my day, I was given the best toolkit known to man. This stuff is one of the donor kits, but it shreds anything it comes in contact with. This will make building a lot easier. So you know how I'm next to a flower forest, right? Well, there's this awesome mountain range on this flower forest that I really wanted to claim. But the possibility that my brain is intact is still up for debate. So me trying to get this entire area claimed was a journey. I don't know why I can never figure out this stupid shovel, but it's just such a weird system for me. Eventually though, I claimed an entire mountain range as my own and I was gonna build an amazing area here. Oh yeah, and I smacked a bird. He's dead now. While wandering around, I did find a Magikarp that was level 17. Now, if you know me very well, I like Magikarps, okay? Just because it can become like a gigantic water monster. So I caught this guy right away. There's absolutely no way Gyarados is not going to be in my party. From there, I continued trading my Eevee. And by continued, I mean continued. We kept killing and killing and killing and now she's like level 10. You may be asking why I'm only ever using her. Well, first off, I only have her. Magikarp can splash. What do you expect? Secondly, she needs a happiness level of 220 to evolve to the Pokemon that I want, which I'm not going to tell you quite yet, but to get there, I need her to kill a lot of things. Oh yeah, and then I found this guy's unclaimed gigantic sugarcane farm and just decided to harvest it for him. Like, I didn't keep these profits or anything. That would be unethical of... I kept them. After making a muck of other players' land, I decided to clear out my own. This time I built something for myself, and to do that, I was going to clear out the top of one of the mountains. First I started with the trees, then the dirt, then the stone, and then it was not, there's a lot of there's a lot to clear out. Alright, that's all I'm saying is there's a lot to clear out. And while I'm clearing out this land, let's clear something up. The best way for you to support the channel is by subscribing, so consider hitting that red button and gray it out. I don't want to see any red, okay? No red. Get rid of the red. And while you're down there, consider liking the video. Unless you don't, then you know what? Just uh, leave a hateful comment. I love reading those. They're funny. Anyway, back to the finished product. And the final product confirms that the earth is flat. Heck you. With this newly developed land, I had to get some materials to build on it. First up was spruce wood, because you don't have any build without spruce wood. If you have spruce wood, you, you need to use it. So if you have to build, you need to use spruce wood. Like, that's just, it's, it, you, you, why are you not using spruce? <clears throat> Next up was cobblestone. Sorry for that little outburst. Um, my other side came out. So, so yeah, I, I spent a couple days getting some resources. That's that's pretty much the gist of that yelling situation that just happened. Okay, so you know how this whole like uh, yelling about spruce thing just happened? 
Well, what if I tell you that the build I'm about to do doesn't include spruce or cobblestone? Yeah, 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 go down, leave your comment, whatever. Let's just move on to the build, okay? I think you'll really like it. So since we're in actually Pixelmon, I went ahead and bought a ton of concrete, quartz, and started building a Poke Center type build. Since this was going to be my house, I didn't want it to have like the regular Poke Center or Mark colors, so I used orange instead of red or blue. I laid down the foundation with light gray concrete and then added white into the inside to make it look like a building. Then once the foundational part was done, I added in an archway for like the center area where I can put a Pokeball, added the orange, made a roof. I mean, it looks really, really cool to be honest. Who knew that three blocks that were all technically the same blocks, just different colors would work so well together. But I actually ran out of money, so I couldn't buy more concrete to finish the build. But there is one block I can gather to make this build finished. And that, my friends, is glass. So I went on my hunt for any sand that I could find in a desert, maybe a beach, pretty much anything at this point. Along my journey, I ended up stumbling upon a gym that I think naturally spawned in. Let's hope this wasn't someone's base, because not only were there command blocks in there, I broke it all. So that's, you know, not good. What I mean by broke it all is that this entire thing was built of terracotta, and I figured instead of buying concrete, maybe I can use terracotta for something later. Which means I broke almost the entire thing. Like, I, I literally spent my time breaking this thing down to nothing. I, I still don't think I'm gonna ever use this terracotta, but you know what? It was kind of fun. It was like one of those satisfying moments. Just, just listen to this. See, how is that not satisfying? Anyway, yeah, that, that was my accomplishment. I'm happy about that. Okay, back to the regular goal at hand. Sand collection. I do have one question though. Why is there gunpowder and slime popping out of the sand? I, first off, don't want this. And second off, it's weird. What's in the sand? Where am I? What desert is this? Once the sand collection was done, I took it back to base, made all the furnaces I needed, and smelted all of it with wood because I was too lazy to go get coal. Now with the glass being smelted, I can go ahead and place it down around the outskirts of my build, making it look just that much better. As well as I can add in that glass door that I really wanted in the front and, you know, wrestle with myself about how I'm supposed to make it, but that's fine. I was also able to muster up enough money to finish off the roof, but not the second roof. So, I mean, technically it's kind of done. Hey, you know what? Rain's not getting in here. That's all we got to worry about now, right? Uh, finishing off this place is going to be slow going. Okay, so maybe this place isn't fully done, but I have another goal in mind. And that exact goal is to tell you I have dropped merch. If you haven't heard, welcomein.store is now open for business, and I've just added a new sweatshirt and shirt collection for this video. Don't worry, they'll stay in the store, but now I have a Welcome in TV logo shirt, as well as a sweatshirt that matches, repping the 100 days text on the sleeve. So finish this video and that Oreo, and then go check out welcomein.store. Anyway, back to the video. This is Pixelmon, so I should probably go catch another Pokemon, right? I wanted to switch up my team from last time. I didn't want any repeats. Uh, well, except Gyarados. He's cool. So for my fire type, I really wanted a Fletchling, which meant I traveled to a birch forest to try and look for one. And while I was there, I did start doing some training for my Pokemon because, well, I'm not just going to sit around and wait for this thing to spawn. I may as well kill Pokemon while I'm here because it's fun. However, it didn't take super super long until the Fletchling spawned, but I was able to catch it on my first try. I was actually really afraid I was going to kill this thing, so I don't think I attacked it. Not currently looking at the footage, but I, I don't think I actually hit it at all. If I did, then I'm lucky it didn't die, because Eevee is freaking strong. Look at this. This guy's dead because of her. See? See what I mean? Strong. Anyway, after I caught the Fletchling, I kind of continued training for a little while, because I didn't want to leave yet. There were a lot of Pokemon that needed death. Hmm. Maybe I do have psychopathic tendencies. Oh well, Pokemon. Training continuation, I ran into a Pikachu back at base. He was much higher level than me, but I still wanted to take him on just for fun. Yeah, and that's all it was for me. Fun. Because all of my Pokemon didn't find it fun when they all died. I probably should be a better trainer than this, just like not throwing them into the hardest fight of their life, but eh, you know what? It's kind of fun. Anyway, while on the mission to grow the happiness of this Eevee, I ran into one of the Pokemon I kind of wanted. Rosalie? Rosalie? Rosalia. This one. Anyway, I needed a grass type for the team and this was it. I currently have Eevee who I'm planning to turn into a dark type, so maybe that's a hint for you. If you guys don't know Pokemon though, then you have no idea what I'm talking about. I also have a Gyarados, a Fletchling, which is gonna turn into a Fletch Finder? What a, I don't know what the, I don't know evolutions. And now I have this green guy, Rosa, uh, that one. So currently I'm rocking dark, water, fire, and grass. Two more and I'll actually have a stable team. 
Speaking of those two empty slots, I went ahead and went to a Mesa because I was trying to catch a Bagon. And no, that is not a D's Nuts joke. That's actually a Pokemon's name. Or I'm pronouncing it wrong and it sounds funnier when I say it. Anyway, basically what I'm trying to say is I wanted a Salamance. However, instead of getting a Salamance on my first day, I ended up not getting it even on my second day here. Instead, I ended up catching a Scraggy, which was not on my list of Pokemon to get, but I'm kind of glad I have him now. It's probably one of the more interesting Pokemon that I've ever gotten, especially since I have no idea what he is, or what he does, or what type he is, or, you know, we'll learn along the way. And then after catching the Scraggy, I ended up getting a Yamask. I don't know if this guy's from 2017 YouTube just saying ya all the time, or if he's actually a good Pokemon, but I went ahead and captured him anyway. At this point, I kind of just wanted 6 Pokemon because I have a feeling I'm going to start doing a lot more training. At one point, I also stumbled across a Shellgaunt and I went ahead and caught him just in case I did want a Salamence at one point. I'm not saying I'm going to, but I guess having him as extra isn't too bad. Okay, so day 18, we're spawning in at night. Why? Because I was AFK letting my Eevee walk around while I went and ate lunch. Sue me. You know why I let my Eevee walk around? Because now her happiness, or hit, I never checked, is above 220. And to level this Eevee up into the Umbreon it's soon gonna be, I have to kill a few more Pokemon and get to level 16. So I flew around my house as fast as I possibly could, started killing every single Pokemon in sight. This thing is so close to leveling up and evolving, I cannot wait to see an Umbreon. Umbreon is definitely my favorite Eevee evolution. And after defeating this Zubat, my Eevee did evolve. It was a little far away, so the evolution was kind of really... I can't tell. I can't... Please, I can't see it. Anyway, from here, it kind of looks cool, but I flew home and look at this. We have an Umbreon and I can even ride her, which doesn't make much sense, but still. She's super, super cool and I'm so happy that she's on the team. I don't know why I love her, but I do. Now with the full on six team, it's time to start training. I went to slash GTS to pick up one of the XP alls. Basically what this means is as I kill a Pokemon, all of the XP is going to spread out between every single Pokemon and level them all up simultaneously. Now with this new purchase, it's really time to start training. I grabbed out my Scraggy and started killing every single thing in sight. Reason I pulled out the Scraggy? Because he's level 31. I don't know why he was so willing to be captured, but he probably shouldn't have been. It's alright though, because he can basically one-shot every single Pokemon I walk into. Heck, my Scraggy was able to level up my Fletching so that it evolved into a... Uh, I, don't, I don't know, I don't have the name in front of me. I told you I don't know evolutions! But now it's glowing shiny white, which means I have a new Pokemon, so that's that's all I know. Oh yeah, and the, the Magikarp also evolved into the Gyarados, so now I have two new Pokemon. However, one of them was a very tiny bird, and this one is a giant sea monster. I feel like there's a difference. Now, I've been focusing on my Pokemon a little bit too much, and my house is still, well, a shell. So I decided to finish it up by doing the interior. I started with the floor, which I did some weird patterns with gray, orange, and white concrete. Then after that, I took quartz and started doing this really intricate, weird section with chests. I just thought it would look super cool if it was more futuristic looking. Then once that side was done, I made myself a healing center where I have a healer and two PCs, just kind of like any other Poké Center, but I mean, this one's orange in my house, so I figured I should have all of the amenities in here. After that, I moved on to the second chest section where I did the same type of design, just kind of doing some really weird stuff for no reason at all, but I think it looked really cool. And once that was done, I added in some furnaces, crafting tables, and we were good to go. Now I have a fully functioning house. Alright, now let me tell you about day 21. I may have made a little bit of a miscalculation. There's a warp slash warp DLG for donators who want to level up their Pokemon. Now, I wanted to check this out and see how we were going to level up. Unfortunately, it was by fighting level 100 Blistlies who can't kill you. So I instantly one-shot level 100 Blistlies six of them and leveled up my Pokemon from like level 7 to level 40. I honestly did not try and do this, I swear. This was going to be something in the future after I checked out the gyms and realized what levels I needed, but this, this was a little excessive. I know that eventually I have to get to level 100, but right now? Seriously? Although I did get my punishment because all of my Pokemon decided to learn like five moves during this, so I had to go through and read everything and level them up, and this was a lot of clicking, okay? So yes, I learned my lesson. I'm only going to do this after I've established that it's time to get to level 100. Which is sooner than you think, but still, I apologize for this. Now on this Pixel 1 server, there are actually a ton of gyms to fight. And not only are there a ton of gyms, there are a ton of different leaders of each gym that are real players and NPCs. So I figured I'd go check out my NPC competition as the real players were offline. Once I got to the water gym, I realized that there were a ton of water Pokemon here and I could have chosen from any one of these. No, like seriously, I, I could have just walked around here and caught the Pokemon that I actually wanted. I mean, I do like Gyarados, so I, I'm not complaining, but like seriously, they're all just right here. I also went ahead and checked out the NPC leader and realized that he was level 100. Um, I don't think I can fight these guys even after my little training accident. 
I also went ahead and checked out the dragon gym, or that's what I believe it was. Dragon type? That's a thing, right? Anyway, while I was here, I even ran into a Salamence, so if I really wanted one, I could just come here and get one. I can't believe these are real areas, but they look super, super cool, and I can't wait to destroy them all. And guess what? Waiting was not an option. I went right back to those level 100 Blistleys. I know that I had a little bit of a training accident in doing this early, but to be honest, if I'm going to ever get any of these gyms done, and there's a lot of them, I'm going to need to be level 100. Plus, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to have to train up multiple different teams to beat all of these gyms, or at least the NPCs of them, because I don't think every single one of my Pokemon is going to be strong against every single type of other Pokemon. If you don't know what I mean, basically in Pokemon, some of the Pokemon have weaknesses to other types, and I don't think I cover enough types to have all of the strengths against all of these gyms. You know what, I'm really good at explaining i'm sure you understand that totally you're not confused at all anyway what i'm basically trying to say is yeah i skipped ahead and got all of my pokemon to level 100 not that this didn't take time i mean truly it takes a ton of clicking and i went through and actually read most of the moves that i'm going to be getting so i'm not having to worry about googling up a different move set later especially since moves are really expensive they're like 20k each by day 26, I had every single Pokemon at level 100. Yes, I know that's a little bit faster than what you guys would normally have, but at the same time, I have a lot to accomplish in these 100 days. Although, trading Pokemon never stops. I may have gotten them all to level 100, but their EVs are probably still terrible. So I went ahead and looked at the Poke Builder and realized that, yeah, I'm correct. All of these guys are not doing great with their EVs, and most of their IVs are actually terrible. So we might have to replace some of these guys later. And while learning how to actually do EVs, I kind of accidentally got all of their speeds maxed out. Who knew that the XP all actually worked for EVs as well? Okay, well, probably you guys did, but no, I did not. I mean, yeah, I can fix it with berries, but that's just going to be really expensive. Thankfully, it was speed and not something else like defense, because speed is something you need on basically every single Pokemon. Hey, at least I learned a valuable lesson while training Eevees. Turn off the XP all. Now, when it comes to Eevees, apparently there's a bit of a learning curve. Thankfully, there is an area on the server where I can buy berries that will basically remove some of the Eevees so I can go train different ones. And that's what I did. I went ahead and mapped out as many berries as I was supposed to have on each Pokemon, removed all of the EVs that I'm going to be needing, and then went back to start training EVs again. Now this training process took a little bit longer because I was training more than one Pokemon. I also turned off XP all because I didn't want them all to be the same type of EV. The last time I trained EVs, I actually looked up how to do it. This time, I'm going off of my own intuition on what I want my Pokemon to actually have based off their IVs. Now it's a lot of technical stuff, but basically I just killed Pokemon all day. And killing those Pokemon gives me a better buff and certain effects. Now I'm not going to go into detail for what exactly I trained, but let's just say all of them have really good speed, most of them have pretty good attack, and the defense on some of them have gotten better. However, I think we're just going to have to see how they react in battle before we do any more EV training. In battle, I must. The first gym I headed to was the Grass Gym. Unfortunately, there were no real gym leaders, so I had to face the NPC. Thankfully, he only had three Pokemon, and I wasn't too worried about my first fight. I started off with Talonflame because this was my Fire-type Pokemon. He was able to take out the first Pokemon, but not without sustaining heavy damage. Then I pulled out Gyarados, probably not my best move. He basically got one shot. Then Scrappy came out and low kicked the man to death. He was also able to get 50% on Superior, so the battle was basically won. From there, Rosalia was able to drain the health of Superior, and we won. Thankfully not too difficult, but I have one more gym in mind before I end the day. And that gym being the Water Gym. I started off the fight with Gyarados, using Crunch. He wasn't able to kill the first Pokemon, but he got him down really, really low. Then I pulled out Talonflame and killed him in one shot. After that, he pulled out a Swampert, which wasn't going to really help me at all, because this thing, Mega Evolved, Dynamo, I don't know what he did to it, but it started glowing. He one-shot the Talonflame. From there, Rosalia was actually able to Giga Drain all of his health and kill him. Now it was just me against a Pelper. He absolutely one-shot my Rosalia, and now it was up to Umbreon. Unfortunately, the fight took forever. If you know Pelper, he can actually heal himself, same thing like my Umbreon can. So our fight was long, lots of healing and lots of damage. Eventually though, we both ran out of our healing moves and I was able to peck, get it, because he's a pelican, so he pecks, down all of his health. With that battle won, I now have a Grass and a Water Badge. That's only 2 out of 18 gyms down, but hey, you know what? Day 32, getting 2 gyms down, that's not too bad. With that battle won, it's time to upgrade my home base. There's a lot of land that I can work with here, so I decided to build a bridge over this gap. But first, I had to clear out a ton more land. Once that was done, the first thing I did was lay an outline with quartz. Then I laid out a very interesting design at the top of the bridge to make it look a bit more city-like. To be honest, I had no idea where I was going with this, but eventually it started looking like something cool. Then I started working on the downward slant of the bridge and it kind of looks like a heart, but let's ignore that fact. 
Once the bridge supports were in, I started laying down the road. I chose black concrete because that's that's a road, so, I mean, it makes sense. Then I went underneath the bridge and started filling in the archways. They were nowhere near perfect, but to be honest, they look kind of cool. Alright, I'm pretty sure that means the bridge is done. Now just to connect it to my base somehow. Alright, that looks kind of okay. You know what, we'll fix it later. And to spice it up a bit, I actually went ahead and made some custom mushrooms. Now I have no idea how to make a mushroom, so the custom part was, um, uh, greatly exaggerated. Well, I mean, no, I made them custom, I just, I don't know how to make mushrooms, so they don't look good. But, you know what, they fit the area. Once that bridge was done, I wanted to add in another area. I don't really know how to describe this place, but it's kind of like a chill area where, yes, you can heal your Pokemon, but also you can hang out, read books, that kind of thing. I don't really know what you do in Pokemon. However, I'm keeping the design very similar to my house. I did the same thing as before, added in the frame, started putting up the walls, and worked on the roof. Since you guys already know how this build kind of works, I don't really have to explain it in grave detail to you. But I'll try my best to make sure you guys have the Pinterest image down below. You guys can try and either copy the build or migrate it to your own building style like I've done. Anyway, this is the product of the second house. I don't really have the interior done yet, but so far it's looking pretty good. Who knew that building with concrete was actually fun? For the interior, I wanted to do a separate floor design as well. So I took out the dirt and started working on a simple design. I added in the center Pokeball, if that's what you can even call this, and then started doing random colors around the outside. I think overall it doesn't look too bad. And at this point, I'm the only one living here, so I'm not complaining. From there, I started adding in the decor. This place had to be very warm and opening if people were going to heal their Pokemon here. I put PCs, healers, bookshelves, chairs, everything you name it. If this place could serve coffee, it would, trust me. Once the interior was done, I could work on the pathing. This place was at a weird angle compared to all of my other roads, and I wasn't sure how I was going to put it. So I basically made a path from my current base to there. And then I fixed my current path, because it just looked really off for some reason. And then once that was done, I even added in mushrooms to the space. They were blue wool mushrooms, so they weren't like an actual mushroom block, because there's not a blue mushroom block. But I think they actually stood out pretty well. Again, don't know why I'm doing mushrooms, but it just seems right. Okay, I swear, just one more build. This little pathing area actually gave me a really good idea for a pond. And since directly under this bridge looks like a river, I may as well make a waterfall to another pond to another waterfall to... Yeah, you get what I mean. So I went ahead and laid out the foundation for an entire pond, and then I made the waterway all the way down, and then another pond. Once all of that was done and we had a foundation for where the water should go, I went ahead and added that in. Filling the entire area was much easier than expected because, well, water just kind of connects. But even with the water being in, I was nowhere near done. I mined out a few areas because I didn't want to just be one deep. That would seem a little tacky. From there, I started adding in flowers all around the pond. And I used the bone block that I bought for the mushrooms to start bone mealing areas. It ended up looking a lot better than I expected, and you know what? It kind of just ties in this area. I'm actually really happy we settled in a flower forest, because now I have an abundance of lovely flowers to work with. Okay, I've kind of been at base for a little while now. So I went ahead to spawn and figured I'd spawn in my first legendary. I grabbed out one of my crate keys, looked at who I could get, which uh, there's a lot. I don't even, I don't know any of these guys, to be honest. I mean, it'd be really cool if I got someone I know like Rayquaza or Mewtwo or Mew or that's about all I know, but it'd be cool. Then I rolled the crate. I was actually really, really excited for what I was going to get. And I ended up getting something I have no idea. Who is this? What's the, I don't even know how to pronounce this. I looked at my PC and he kind of looked like a snake. I don't, I have no idea who this is, but he's only level five. So we're going to have a lot of work to do. I also looked at his type and he has a ground move, which means I know who I'm removing. The other guy whose name I can't pronounce, Runnagurgis, uh, apologize. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce names. From there though, it was time to level him up just a little bit. I mean, I know I'm going to have to grind EVs and all that kind of jazz, but I figured I could at least kill the Blistleys. However, I had to use XP all because this guy was terrible at level five. He had nothing, nothing of use. Once the session was over, I checked his level. He was at level 53, and I realized I could sell him if needed for like half a million dollars. However, I feel like I could sell him for a lot more if anyone ever noticed those IVs. <laughs> Let's not mention the percent he's at. Now that he's high enough level to start EV training, I looked up what I really wanted on this guy. However, after all of the XP all blisslies giving him some EVs that I didn't want, I had to remove them with berries. However, once I was done with that, I could successfully start working with him at Warp Dev. First up was working on his attack EVs. And can I just say, no one told me this guy was going to become Gigantor when he got hit? I don't know what triggered this, but he just, like, a mega, I don't, what did he do? Someone help me. Anyway, I just honestly started working on his attack EVs, kind of ignoring the fact that he became someone else. Although, it was slow going at first, so I kind of switched to an XP all person so I could just train him for him. 
Gyarados accidentally trained way too many EVs on this, um, Zy I, the legendary. So I warped back to EV and bought some more berries. Once he was more balanced out, I headed back to EV training. Next on the list was defense. Again, I used a different Pokemon because I didn't really want to have to worry about slowly doing this, and I mean, it still took a while with a level 100. And with defense being done, I now have a perfect 100 EV Zy uh, this guy. All that's left is to get him to level 100. Wow, the award for great foreshadowing goes to yours truly. For the next couple of days, I spent leveling this guy to level 100. I also paid very close attention to the moves that he was getting because I have a move set that I want for him. Not that I even know if it's good or not, because I have literally no prior knowledge to this legendary. Eh, I'm sure you guys will let me know down below if I got scuffed or not. Anyway, with this new legendary added to our team, and now that he's level 100, I feel like we can take on a couple more gyms. The next gym I wanted to fight was the Fire Gym, which had a enormous map. Look at that volcano, that's pretty cool. I found the NPC leader and started the battle. I didn't think that this one would be too difficult, especially since I still have all six Pokemon and now we have a legendary. This battle went like any other, a win on the first try. And now I have claimed the Fire Badge, which means I have three out of 18. Not that many, but we'll get there. But there's no way I'm only gonna face one gym, I just got a new legendary, I'm out for blood. I figured the next gym I could take on was the bug gym. I teleported there, and I'm not gonna lie, I died quite a few times. You're only allowed to select four Pokemon in your party, so it wasn't that easy, but at the same time, I feel like I should have been able to win this sooner. However, my final match against this gym was a doozy. Gyarados started out first, getting absolutely one shot. Then I pulled out Scrafty while his scissor did his evolve thing. Scrafty wasn't able to kill him, but he did a ton of damage. From there, I took out my legendary. Scissors died to a thousand arrows within an instant. And he was also able to take down the next Pokemon with ease. After that, it was a 1v1. We were both low, but I did the little mega evolve thingy that it does when he got low. He gained health from me, but that wasn't enough, and thousand arrows killed him, and now I have the bug badge. That was much harder than I expected. But now we have four out of the 18 badges I need. After finding all of these battles, I realized that my team could use a lot of help. So I decided to go to Warp Safari, which is an area for only donators. But it's totally worth it, because once you get there, there are all types of Pokemon waiting for you. Now I figured my fire type could use some help, Talonflame's kinda not cutting it, so I decided to catch one of those. So I headed over to the desert biome where I found a Darumaka, that thing right there, that red one, and I figured he would be a good Pokemon to have. Now let's just say this wasn't the only one that I decided to catch. I actually really wanted a water type too, so I went and found a Lapras. However, all of these Pokemon here have really bad IVs, so I wanted to continue catching them until I had at least a decent IV. And by continue catching them, I mean like 17 catches later. Like I would go back and forth between trying to catch a Lapras and trying to catch a d d uh, the red guy. Every time I did it, I would check the Pokemon's IVs to see if I had anything over like 65. That was probably my targeted area because right now I'm rocking like 30s. I know from this area I'm not going to get anything too special, like anything above 80, but you know what, I would have taken like a 69 or something, that would be close enough to 70, right? Eventually after catching half pages of Lapras and Daramuk, the, the red guy again, I left the safari with a 69% Lapras and a 65% Daram, da, Daram, Dar, how do I pronounce this? And with the collection of having two separate new Pokemon, I had to take them over to Warp DLG. This is obviously the donor leveling warp that we've used a few times already in the video. I went ahead and enabled my XP all and started grinding out levels for these two new guys. I used Umbreon a little bit too long and realized that she wasn't doing enough damage to the Blissleys, which didn't make much sense, but I, I guess uh, maybe I need to upgrade her a little bit. Eventually I switched over to a better Pokemon and started leveling these guys up a little bit faster. But once I was done, they were both all the way maxed to level 100. However, you guys know we are not done yet. Just because I have them at level 100 doesn't mean they're anywhere close to good. To make them battle ready, I had to head over and train their EVs. Lapras was up first with special defense. Lapras was taking a little bit longer on special defense than I wanted, so I used Umbreon to train her special attack for her with the XP all. And since I used the XP all, Darmanitan actually got the same amount of EVs, so he's good to go as well. Now it was time to give them the moves that I wanted them to have. I went ahead and bought Ice Beam and Thunderbolt for Lapras. That gave her an interesting skill set. Darmanitan actually had some really good fighting moves, so I just needed to get him some better fire moves. I just realized this guy's a fire type with fighting moves. If you think about it, he's kind of a firefighter. No, that only stuck with me? Alright, cool. Anyway, I gave him Flare Blitz and Fire Punch. I figured that's probably good for Darmanitan. Alright, so for the next few days, I did something extremely special. I know we just switched out our Fire-type, but I realized I could get a Legendary Fire-type with ease. 
I bought an orb from GTS, the player ran auction, and then combined that with a firestone to get the fiery orb of souls. Now what this means is I can go out, kill wild Pokemon, 375 to be exact, and fill this orb up and then put this in a shrine and summon a Moltres. Moltres is a legendary flying fiery type and that would replace Talonflame extremely well. But before I go ahead and kill 375 innocent Pokemon that are probably not innocent because they spawned it next to my base, I'm going to use my last two legendary keys. Rolling my first key was super nerve wracking because I have no idea what I'm going to get, but it landed on a Tornadus. I don't know if that's how you say it, but I'm going to say it that way. That's actually a really good Pokemon, so I was hoping for the same luck in my second crate, and I'm pretty sure I got it. The second crate gave me a Mew. A Mew. I mean, I would have loved Mew too, but Mew is absolutely amazing. I'm pretty sure throughout these 100 days I don't use it properly, but it's still one of my favorite Pokemon. Having a Mew in the party is super cool, especially when his IVs are 84%. This guy's gonna be an absolute maniac in battle. Returning home, it was time to grind for the Moltres. 375 Pokemon is not easy, and this took a really long time. I would basically fly around my entire base looking for Pokemon after Pokemon until I settled in this plains region. Here I was able to see all the easiest of Pokemon to kill, and they weren't from a spawner. You might think you could have gone to Safari or to one of the gyms where those Pokemon spawn in, but that was kind of impossible because this is only fueled by wild Pokemon. Which meant, yeah, the entire length of Ready Player One, or, well, most of it, I think I watched some while eating lunch, was spent in this plains biome killing Pokemon. Although once it was actually time to get the Moltres, it was totally worth the wait. Once I got to Warp Shrines, I was able to see a mini volcano with the fiery shrine for Moltres right in front of me. I quickly headed over there and placed in my orb, and that's when Moltres spawned in. Obviously, I have a few Master Balls, so I'm not letting this one get away, and caught her instantly. This was my first caught legendary Pokemon, so I'm really happy about this one. I quickly put her in the roster, checked her IVs, realized it was a little low, but you know what, this thing is kind of OP later on. I know you guys think she's one of the weaker legendaries, but give her a chance. If she was going to take the fire flying type of the team, I had to get her ready. EVs were first on the list as she was already level 100. The first one we grabbed was speed because we're going to need that if she's going to ever outflank an opponent. Then I moved on to attack where she was going to gain some more strength for some of her moves and then to defense. With Moltres raring to go, it was time to get Mew and Tornadus ready for battle as well. These guys have thankfully gone up in level a little bit from doing the EVs with Moltres, but they're still below 50. You guys know it was time to attack the Harmless Blissleys for a little while to level them all the way up to 100. As we were going, they were learning new moves, and to be honest, I had no idea what I wanted on them from the beginning. And at this point, I still thought it was a Thunderous, not a Tornadus, so I was kind of hoping for lightning moves, but that's, that's is not this guy, so uh, whoopsies. By day 70, they were level 100, and it was time to move on to the moves and Eevees for these guys. Mew was first up learning Will-O-Wisp, and then I bought him Taunt, then with his last move being Seismic Toss. Then I gave Tornadus his first move, U-Turn. Then I gave him Super Power and finished him off by going to Warp Tutor and giving him Tailwind from the Flying Tutor. This is my first time ever being here, and honestly it looks really cool. And now on to the berries. Since I had my XP all on, these guys actually have full Eevees, which is something I do not want. So I went through, bought almost like a hundred berries, and removed all of the Eevees that I didn't want on Mew and Tornadus. This was really expensive and a lot of clicking, but it's worth it to get the Eevees that I really want on these guys, especially Mew, since he's, you know, super overpowered with 84% Eevees. And now that the bad Eevees have been wiped away, it's time to start gaining them back. I trained Mew's HP first. She actually ended up having the most HP on the entire team, but that's probably because I think I maxed out her HP. Tornadus, however, went to her special attack first. Thankfully, both of these guys' speeds pretty much already where I want it, so I didn't have to grind that for too long, and I can move on to the ones that didn't make as much sense to me. I'm totally not using a website for these things, and special attack was on there for him, so yeah, that's why I'm killing this guy over and over again. I also trained his attack for a little while, but it was kind of already up, so I didn't need it too much. And now all of their EVs are perfect. We've got their moves done, their levels, and their EVs, and now all of my legendaries are ready for battle. And since they are, I took them straight to the electric gym. I could only have five selected, but I've got four Pokemon, so it didn't really matter. Or four legendaries. Right off the bat, my Tornadus got one shot, but he did deal a decent bit of damage to this, um, outlet. Then my Mew was able to do a little bit more damage to this guy, still not enough. My Zygarde was able to take him out, however. Then he almost one-shot the next guy. 
Thankfully, the battle was won extremely quickly. My Zygarde basically took out the rest of the team, and it was no problem. That means we now have the Electric Badge, and we are one step closer to getting all 18. The second gym I fought in this period of time was the Flying Gym. I first used Moltres to get in a huge attack on this la- uh, I'm not even gonna try. Then my Mew was able to kill that Pokemon, and it was a 2v4 at this point. Unfortunately, his Charizard decided to absolutely destroy my Mew. From there, I pulled out Moltres and tried Hurricane, which got the Charizard extremely low. Then I did it one more time, securing the second kill. Now I have a huge upper advantage, but I can still only use Hurricane with Moltres because of Choice Scarf. I guess if that's my only choice, then Moltres would just have to use Hurricane on this guy, although it doesn't really do much. I pulled out Scrafty to see what he could do. He low kicked him, and it did a decent bit of damage for just a Scrafty. Unfortunately, it was not enough to fully kill this guy. He kept restoring health from the leftovers, and it was kind of impossible for this just to happen in a one-on-one. -on -one. After Scrafty was pummeled, I turned to Tornadus, who didn't do too hot. He was able to get a couple good hits in before he was absolutely demolished, and it was back to Zygarde. Zygarde really didn't do a lot of damage, and with the leftovers, it was kind of hard to compete. It was an extremely long battle between this guy protecting himself, letting the leftovers heal, and me not being able to hit him because of that protection. It was basically up to Zygarde to just outstand his healing factor, and it was really, really tough to do. Unfortunately, Zygarde was killed, and it was up to Moltres, who I used Heat Wave with to see if that would kill him. And after failing the first time, it one-shot him the second, which means we now have the Flying Gym Badge. But it wasn't over yet. I headed to the ground gym next. There I used my Lapras first to get a few good hits on Garchomp. Thankfully he was almost dead by the time I pulled out my Mew. Seismic Toss killed him and now I have taken down one of his extremely overpowered Pokemon. Mew got one shot and it was time for Zygarde. Zygarde basically one shot the Exegrill but his health got really really low. Unfortunately he didn't survive the next hit. Moltres was able to kill the second one, but now it was down to Hippo, Hippo, uh, Hip, Hippo Man. Moltres was swapped out and killed later on. Now I was left with Tornadus, which um, probably not the best Pokemon for this. Although you won't believe what happened. Hippo Man over here actually cannot hit Tornadus. I don't know if it's because he can fly or what, but the only thing this hippo could do was heal. Every time he tried to hit me, it didn't work because his attacks were only ground. And guess where Tornadus resides? The clouds. So after a very long time and probably a very well-deserved snack break, Tornadus won. Which means that ground gym badge is mine. Oh, hey, normal leader, would you mind just uh, giving me the badge? Thank you very much. In real talk, I started out with Moltres using Heat Wave, which absolutely almost destroyed Porygon Z. Then, after he was dead, Low Punny came out, and I had no idea what to use, except I just used Heat Wave again. Even with Low Punny Mega evolving or whatever, I have no idea what she that is. She turned white, okay? I don't know what that was. Moltres was still able to get the hit, but die. Then Tornadus came out, killed the low punny, and now it was a 1v2 after his death. Zygarde was basically able to carry the team once again and kill another Pokemon, and we are all good to go. Normal badges, mine, literally no stress. And the last gym I wanted to be in this time frame was the Bug Gym. Now, I have a feeling this is going to consist of a lot of grass types, so I grabbed out every single fire type I had. Moltres was the first out of the fire, having to react against a Venusaur with the Keystone making the Mega, but that didn't even phase Moltres and absolutely destroyed him. Unfortunately, he died later on, and Talonflame took his place, killing another Pokemon. Now, it's a Sizzlipede versus all of the rest of my Pokemon, and it didn't even stand a chance. Talonflame destroyed the Sizzlipede, and I didn't even need to use more than two Pokemon to get this Bug-type badge. With the acquisition of all of my new badges, I actually might need to build a new building. Since there are 18 in total, I kind of don't want to keep them in my own house, and I figure I should build, well, a trophy room. So day 81 was spent landscaping for this area, and let me tell you, it was no small feat. I accidentally sold all of my dirt a little while ago, so I had to mine out a little extra and create this platform for the trophy building. But once that was done, I was able to start construction of our newly built trophy wing. I wasn't going to stray far from the previous buildings that I built and stuck with the same color concepts. I bought gray, white, and yellow concrete for this one. Yellow being the closest to gold and making the most sense for a trophy room. Once the construction of the base was fully complete, I started moving on to the roof and this archway where we add a Pokeball. The Pokeball is always my favorite part, and once that was done, I finished up the roof and now we have a complete trophy room building. 
Okay, well, semi-complete. We still gotta add the interior and most of the pathways to the, you know what, it's half complete. We'll say half. But don't worry, that half will be completed in absolutely no time, but first, I have to work on the paths. I still have this bridge that I have to connect this building to, so I decided to work on that first. Once that was all laid out, I started working on the interior interior of this build. The floor was completely random like normal, but it ended up looking pretty good. And from there, I had to do the decoration part of the build, probably my least favorite, but it turned out pretty okay. I used quartz pillars so I could display all of the trophies or the actual gym badges that I get throughout these 100 days on them. Then I laid out a ton of bookshelves in some very random orders just to make it look a little bit more inviting. I don't know what it is about bookshelves, but since we're in 1.12.2, they're kind of the only block that make any decorational sense whatsoever. See, this place doesn't look too bad, right? Right? With this room now complete, it is time to finish out the last nine badges. However, I'm not going to give you a detailed layout by layout 1v1 of every single battle that I do. I am only fighting NPCs after all. So I'll basically just tell you if it went well or if I had to do a gym multiple, multiple times. Okay, maybe I won't tell you that fact because the amount of times I do some of these is embarrassing. And this ice gym is a prime example, but you know what? We beat it. That's all you need to know. The next four gyms were actually quite easy. The Psychic Gym took literally no stress at all, and was an easy victory. The Dark Type Gym, however, did have its struggles. I am definitely not going to show you how many times it took me to face this gym, however, because that would make my career go bye-bye. If all of you Pokemon lovers knew how badly I was at this game, <laughs> you would not hit that like button. Again, the only thing you need to know is that I won, okay? That's the only valuable thing you need to take out of this gym battle. Unfortunately, the next two gyms were basically nothing to talk about. The fairy gym didn't take anything out of me, and the fighting gym was a one try and that was it. But now I am two badges away from defeating every single NPC gym. Those two gym badges were the ghost and dragon badge. Now, I was saving ghost for last just because it's probably going to be the coolest. Ghost, however, was kind of a breeze. Didn't take me many tries at all to get the ghost badge, and then I moved on to the dragon. However, I was not expecting a Dialga as their first dra- I'm, I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. I feel it in my soul I'm pronouncing that wrong. I was sure I was gonna lose because this was my first battle and I didn't switch out any of my Pokemon from the previous ghost fight. However, I was actually able to secure the W with the Dragon Gym first try. Let's go! We beat all 18 NPC gyms and honestly, it was a breeze. I definitely didn't need any of the legendaries. Totally could have done it on my own. Now that the gyms have actually been completed, there are a few other things that I can introduce into this 100 days. First up being quest, which I can accomplish by doing slash quest. My current one, killing 300 plus Pokemon. Now, I know you think I did the whole fiery souls thing, but there are multiple tiered quests, so I have a lot of Pokemon to kill. And while in Warp Safari killing random Pokemon, a Rayquaza actually spawned. This is the first legendary that spawned on the server while I've been around, or at least the first one that I've seen anywhere close to me. The best part was that I was actually there to catch it with Master Balls in my inventory. Thankfully, this guy cannot break out of any Master Balls, and we are good to go now having a legendary Rayquaza. While in the Safari, for that very short amount of time, doing that one singular quest, I got so lucky to get this Rayquaza. I also went ahead and checked out their Ivies and... Oh my word, 93%. We are gonna make history with this guy. And you guys already know, with this new Pokemon, our Rayquaza, it is time to get them even more battle ready than their 93% IVs. First up, I went to a move tutor and learned V-Cray, probably one of the coolest and most overpowered moves I have ever seen in my life. That is gonna be absolutely insane for battle, as well as they already came with a move that makes them mega evolve. I don't even know how that works, let alone the fact that he can mega evolve. That is so cool. Let's just say he puts every other legendary on my team to absolute shame. And he does that without even having perfect EVs, which mentioning EVs is our next stop with him. You guys already know how EV training works, so we're just going to say that um, I did it. That's all you need to know. And once we were done with him, he was absolutely amazing, except for the fact that he wasn't level 100 yet. A little bit of foreshadowing there, but yes, the next day I did spend leveling him up from 70 to 100. He's probably better than most of the Pokemon that I currently have, but you can't put them to shame because their IVs are really bad compared to 93%.
It's like the difference between the kids who want the teacher to curve the test score and the ones who don't because they already have an amazing grade. Now I just realized that we are getting extremely close to the end of these 100 days. And at this point, I've kind of trained a team that can be pretty much anyone. I mean, if I went into a battle with somebody here at my base at the current location that I'm about to build, I'm pretty sure I'd win. And to prove that, one of the moderators actually wanted to battle me. <laughs> Pathetic. So to prepare for the moderator of the server, I went ahead and made a Pokeball Arena. To do that, I spent a few days clearing out all of the land and shaping in this flower forest to what I really wanted. I had these original designs from the very beginning when I saw this place, so I'm very happy that I was able to fulfill this landscape and truly build what I wanted. The next day, I went ahead and built the bridge, a very similar bridge design to the one that we current rock over that little river, but this one is a much, much higher bridge. It also extends a lot farther than the other bridge, but it looks really, really nice with all of the quartz and the black concrete. And now that we have an area to get over here, it's time to build a battle arena. Unfortunately, yes, there was a little mishap and I forgot to record up until the point where I built the Pokeball, but I mean, look, it's a Pokeball, you guys get that, all right? I built all into the night building this amazing arena, this awesome fighting rink for me and this moderator and anyone else who wants to challenge me on the server. As I said before, feel free to challenge me on Pokesaga anytime, IP link down below in the description, and you can take on my team of Pokemon in maybe the next 200 days video. Once this battle arena was done, and it looks amazing I might add, I went ahead and got prepared for this fight. Once I was ready, I walked over to the arena, and he was already there. This man was an absolute mystery to me. I have no idea who he is or where he came from, but I healed up my Pokemon and initiated the battle. The first fight was my Moltres versus his Lopunny. Honestly, I didn't have high hopes because it's a Moltres, and I don't know anything about a Lopunny. The low pony ended up mega evolving, which scared me more than anything, and didn't kill the Moltres in one shot, so that was surprising. Unfortunately, the Moltres didn't do anything at all because low pony used Fake Out. I don't know what that does, but um, Moltres died next turn. From there, I pulled out Zygarde and was hoping he would at least do some damage, please. Unfortunately, Zygarde basically got one hit. I mean, he was able to heal a little bit from his complete form trans transformation. I don't really know what this is, but he's here. Thankfully, he didn't die from the next hit and was able to get low punny down to 4%. However, I know that he doesn't attack first, so it was basically useless doing any move next. He fainted and two of my Pokemon are already dead to low punny. At this point, this person is insanely good and I have literally no idea what I am doing. I went ahead and Mega Evolve my Rayquaza because I feel like that's the only hope I had. From there, his little punny still did more than half of my health. I don't understand this. That's crazy. I really thought I was going to do much better than this. However, I was able to kill the low punny, which means I'm, um, well, I did 33% of the battle. It's a 3v3. He went ahead and pulled out Azernius, which I have no idea what this is, but I used V-Create and it absolutely destroyed him. I was very, very happy with this move, especially since I attacked first, which meant that I was going to be able to do it again, or at least I was going to be able to use my speed as an advantage. I figured I'd be able to use extreme speed and kill him once and for all, first hit as always, and boom, that was it. Now I have to deal with the, I don't, who is this guy? I don't even know who this is, but I don't have any high hopes for this because their name is Blue. I thought that I was going to get the first hit, but um, my speed didn't even come close to this person's whatever that was, which means I lost the battle fair and square on day 100. I just spent 100 days gathering and training Pokemon just to lose to a moderator. I don't know who this guy was, but I have a feeling I'm going to be challenging him later in 200 days for a rematch. And that's it, 100 days in Pixelmon. If you guys have seen this far into the video, then make sure to hit that like button down below, as well as subscribe to the channel. I've also just released even more new merch at welcoming.store, so make sure to go check that out down below in the description. And while you're down there, if you're considering getting an energy drink of any kind, make sure to go check out G-Subs, use code WELCOMINTV at checkout to get 10% off. A big thank you to Pokesaga for making this video possible, and I cannot wait to see each and every one of you in the next one. Peace out, everybody.